So congratulations, you've reached the last row of blocks. And so we're going to sort this M row out. I've already taken the cornerstones and lattices out um, just because I work on those as I go. But um, we're going to do the M1 through M6 bag on this video. And then we're going to set M7 through 13 aside. And then we have how many of these? Two? Two of the four and a half inch squares. And that's going to be for M7 and M11. So let me mark those now. So we have M7 and M11. And both of these are going to be in the next bag sort. So I'm going to set these aside with the second bag. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the booklet and see which blocks are modified. So we have M1, M3 and 4, M7 and 8, 9 and 11. And why do we do this? We do this so that when we get to the block prep, we know, or when we get to the sort on this sort, that we know that the pieces are not going to fit on this page they're gonna you have to fit the pieces here because this is smaller than that so otherwise you don't know if you're correct or not so M13 so we have M1 and of course it's modified like we just found out so I'm gonna go to the booklet and I'm just gonna take out this page it's easier to deal with a layer or two rather than six because the paper gets puffy and you know anyway so we're gonna dump out my and we're gonna dump out this bag and see what we got going on here so we have a big square and we have let me do this there we go bunch of little pieces I'm going to sort through here and check for these pieces. That apparently is that long piece. And as I do this, I'm going to group these pieces into similar shapes so that as I go through this bag, or as I go through this bag sort, I can jump quicker to like-minded, or like, like-minded, like pieces, and uh, hopefully cut some time down. So let me get sorting some of these, and we'll find out what we got. So I'm going through this and this big square is for the center and I've got these pentagon shaped things they are in the middle but I also am looking for the center square and there are two that are very very close together in size so what you need to do is in this they look like they fit when you put them on the square in the diagram because the, the lines are have the lines have a thickness so what you need to do is you need to line it up to these pentagons to make sure that it fits exactly because this one is smaller and this one is the correct one and there's quite a few squares in this bag so and they're similar in size so make sure that you're checking for this particular square that matches these pentagon shapes on the bottom or whatever, flat side. So I'm gonna put these in place, kinda. And I do this just cause it makes it look better. But it's not necessary in this case. And then I've got all of my border pieces. So the next thing I'm gonna do is label all my pieces M1. So I've got these labeled and the next thing I'm going to do is mark my focus fabric. So let's figure out what that would be by looking at the picture. And we've eliminated some borders here. So um, this center square is going to be focus fabric and then these pentagons are going to be background and then this big center square is focus fabric. And if this is if this is focus fabric, then this is background, because otherwise it's not going to be distinct. So 
this outer green border in the picture in the book is not going to be on this block. So these are background, this is focus fabric, and this is focus fabric. So I'm going to put these in a bag, label them with a piece of paper, M1. I'm going to stick these in a sandwich bag and uh, get to the next block. One thing I did not do on this block was mark directional for fabric, and I do have a directional fabric for this block, but I have a center square and a big background square of the focus fabric, so really all I have to do is figure out if I care about directional, which I do because I'm kind of obsessive about that. So we're going to have, I'm going to mark this up, and then I'll just mark this up just so that I don't get it sideways because that'll drive me nuts. So now I will go on to the next block. Moving on to the M2 block, we have some thicker rectangles here on the sides. And then we have two triangles to find in the pile. So I will go through and find those. It looks like we might have some very similar sizes going on, so I'll check that. And then we have arrows here. So I have four of those. And then there's a little square in the center and some bigger triangles on the outside. So I think that would be this. Let's move this to get some accuracy. Yep. So let me go through and find these pieces. So I've located all the pieces. There's a couple different size triangles, but it's no question as to which ones are for here. So there won't be any issues like there have been in past bags. So let me lay these out. And again, I had just one square that fit. So I made sure that I lined it up to these little ends of these arrow pieces like we did for the M1 block. I've got all the pieces laid out, and so the next task is to label them with M2. So all of them are labeled, and now we need to mark focus fabric. So the center square is focus fabric, as is these larger triangles around it. And it looks like I missed marking one of the pieces, which is why we double check. So M2, and then red dot, so one, two, three, four, center square, and then these triangles that are pointing in are also focus fabric. So that looks like it for that. Now I've got to check to see if I have a directional fabric, and this looks like it's not, but it is, because if you look that way and that way, so that looks different. So I have to then decide how I want to handle that because in this case I can make it be opposite or whatever. So I like to make them all the same because it's just easier. So I will mark with an arrow when I go to do my block prep. I don't have to relay these out to figure out which orientation they need. So I'll do this on every one of the red dots. Whoops. So I got all of these, that one, oh, I missed the center square. This is why I double check. And I've made a mess of it, but I've got them all. So I'm going to put these in a bag, and I'll move on to the next one. So M3 is the next one, and it is a modified block. So I'm going to go to the book and pull out this page and crease it. So it can be as flat as possible because we're going to work from this. So we have these kind of triangles in here. We have a center square. We have four diamonds on the side. And then we have these shapes. I made a pile of strange shapes. And that's where these are. You're going to have left hand, right hand problems, but if like if you do if you do this and you're right on the backs like we always do, you should have no issues. So I'm going to go through. Looks like there's two thicknesses of trapezoids and the 
thinner ones are going to be for this block. So I will get to finding... Oh, that's fun. <laughs> so... Yeah. And then we have two different angles. So if I put that there, obviously that doesn't fit. But if I flip it over, it fits just fine. So that's going to be interesting as I lay these out. But I will get to getting it done. So I've got all the pieces lined up. There is a slight variation if you flip these around. These are very slightly different. Like if I flip this over, it's going to be a little shy on this side. It's not, it doesn't seem that it's going to be an issue, but for people like me, I had to have it exactly right. So just FYI. So I'm going to mark these with M3. So I got all these marked and now I'm going to label my focus fabric. And we've got these here. So these triangles from the center are going to be focus fabric. And then the diamonds. And then, so that's background. These weird shaped trapezoids are background and the outer ring is background. So let me check for directional fabric and I have a very directional fabric. It is a stripe. So I have a directional fabric and there's no question about that. And I will... See, this is the kind of thing for somebody like me that, that bothers me. The diamonds are lined up but these aren't. So I'm going to make these radiate from the center. So I'm going to mark them as such. With the diamonds, I'm not sure. So if these go out from the middle, and then these, I'm going to do what they did, kind of. These two will be going up. And these two are going sideways. Because it's, it's 180, it's like this goes this way, that goes this way. So, you know, we'll see how it works out from that standpoint. But actually, you know what? Let me do this to remind myself. So then if I do, like, around the clock kind of a thing. So I got one, I got this going around like this. So then I can make these flowers travel around. So let me get this bagged up and move on to the next block. So next we have M4, and M4 is also modified, so we're going to go to the booklet. And they've simplified the corners and made it a little bigger. So first thing I notice is we have these little tiny rectangles. And then we have some of the fat rectangles sitting here. And then we have some of the larger triangles, followed by... The smaller ones, there's some really teeny ones, there's four teeny ones, and I don't think those go because I need more than four for this, so I'm assuming it's this pile here. So I will put these out as they need to be and go from there. Oh, squares. We'll have to do that too. That's not the right size, so this should be fun. So I measured the squares and I have four bigger ones and then there's eight of this size and eight of this size and they're very close but it's dis there's, they're easy to distinguish. There's a considerable, well I wouldn't say that's considerable, but it's a good visual difference and the smaller ones here are what goes on this block. So there's five of the smaller ones that will go in the center. So I've got all my pieces laid out and I'm going to label them M4. Wanted to point out that the squares that I used in the center of these, actually we, there was nine of them, so I have four left for another block, but I wanted to correct that mistake. 
Now that it's labeled, I can label the focus fabric and we have the picture under here. So the center squares are going to be the background and which means the little rectangles around it are going to be focus fabric. So let's do all those at the same time so we don't forget any. And we got four here and then there's the ones in the corner. Three, four, and one, two, three, four. Then we have the triangles. So there's four of those as well. So we have all of this and all of that and the triangles. And this border is not on this block because they've um, expanded it. So I will check for directional. And I think I don't have a I don't have a directional fabric for this one. So I will leave it alone. If you have a directional fabric, you know, go ahead and make your decisions and label it. And I will bag this up and move on to the next one. Next we have M5, and M5 is going to be from the book. And I have eight of these, four of these, and four of these. So I'm going to go with the eight because obviously that's what I need for this block. And then I've got some bigger squares, and then I need two of the, th the thicker rectangles of a smaller size, and then two of the thicker rectangles of the larger size, maybe. There we go. So let me get these laid out properly. So I've got my pieces laid out, so the next thing to do would be to label them. So I've got my pieces labeled and now I'm going to mark my focus fabrics. We got the big focus fabric on the large squares and then we have these are this is kind of interesting. There's a border around this in the picture which is not here. So I'm going to use these rectangles as background and then take these two squares as focus fabric as is in here. So we're just not going to have this outside section. So I'm going to mark these as focus fabric and then I'm going to check for my directional fabric and I don't have that. I just have a floral so it'll be all right and I will bag this and move on to the last block of this bag. So M6 is the last block and we have an octagon in the center. It is a symmetrical octagon though it is a little smaller than the lines. It's all right. It'll all work out just fine. So I, I know this because I've checked the sides of the squares and then they line up to the paper just fine. So we're going to put the squares, the smaller squares, and the inside. And then we have four teeny tiny triangles that go here on the edge. Um, we have the border strips, which are two different thicknesses. So the thinner ones go on the outside and then the bigger squares will go in the corners. So let me get this all laid out. So I've got my pieces all laid out. And so now it's a matter of labeling them. So I have all my pieces marked. Now I just need to label the focus fabrics. And we have the trapezoids around the center octagon to use there and then the teeny tiny triangles on the other side of the squares are also focus fabric and then number four we also have the outer part of the double strip so the thinner of the two is going to be focus fabric as well so that means that the square that the, the thicker border strip the other squares and the octagon are going to be background fabric as for my whether I have directional, I do have a directional fabric. It's a little tiny stripe. So I will mark for uh, directional on that. And I think I'm going to do like they did here in the picture that goes this way and then this way on this side. So that would mean I would do this and this. And then here I would do this and this. Same thing here and here here because this one does not 
this is not a stripe that rotates. It's the same up and down. It's just side to side. It's different. So I will put this in my bag and this completes the row M bag one sort video.